story of Karnataka and the first chapter, if you like, of Karnataka began not with us, but with all the Jamaats who put in a lot of hard work, to get, who gave us the knowledge and understanding to begin our work. So there is leadership in all of us. We, we can't look ahead or beside us or anything for leadership. We have to find it amongst us and within each of us. Edelu Karnataka is a story like that. Edelu Karnataka could not have been a story which is about some top-down energy of command and control, trying to keep everybody together in our 103 constituencies. No. It could have been, but then it would not have lasted. What we have today, what I think we can show to the rest of India, is that we have 192 teams that are joined up but can also work autonomously. And of course they have a, we have all a lot to learn. You know, we got this going in a few months. And as Guru was saying earlier in the day, sometimes even we can't believe it that it actually happened the way it happened. But we knew that our goal was to defeat the BJP. Uh, we knew that in order to defeat the BJP, there were three things. Defeat the BJP, find the candidate who can and is capable of defeating them and that you could get the vote out. Not 50, 60 percent of each constituency not even coming out to vote. Those days are history. Those days belong to a time when we thought democracy came for free, that we could take it for granted. We cannot take it for granted anymore. We have to earn it. And we will have to earn it with every vote. We will have to contribute each of our votes and count them as precious contributions to the process of democracy. If we, each of us felt, oh, what can my one vote do? Where is the spirit of democracy in any of us? When we began the Karnataka experiment, it was interesting to know that there were four categories that don't really vote. The rich, the educated, the poor and women in minority communities. Frankly, between you and me, we weren't quite bothered about the first two. But the other two, which is the poor and minority women, theirs is a, the first two are about entitlement, that we do, we choose not to vote. The other two are feeling excluded from democracy. We cannot afford that. You, when you do Meloko Andra, how do you pronounce it? Meloko. Meloko Andra, don't ever forget that. It will never be a democracy. They have to feel they own this place as much as any one of us. We all need to collectively own the space we occupy. That is democracy. 
we all have a right to demand and we all have the responsibility to be citizens. That's what human rights is about. And we are in a democracy where we should be taking human rights for granted, but we are not able to. And therefore, one of the things that happened with Edeiru Karnataka, because you see, it started with, there are four key elements to this. One is, we must have the knowledge and understanding. Even though we belong there, we must have a no the knowledge and understanding to begin. Where do we begin? What do we focus on? Right? That's not difficult. Data exists and understanding exists. It's the combination of the data we have, let's say, from the last three elections, of the trends that have been, the voting patterns that have been there, plus a sense, the hand on the pulse of the ground. Why do we need that? We need it because we have said we have to defeat the BJP. Who is in the best position to defeat them in that particular constituency? And we want all communities to come out and vote. This time we cannot afford people staying home. From here on we will never be able to afford it. So that's why the knowledge bit is very important. So that's one, the knowledge and analysis, we build understanding and rootedness. The second thing is you cannot actually work on the ground if you don't have people on the ground. They cannot be imported from somewhere else, Bangalore and some other parts of Bangalore, uh, Karnataka to create those teams. Those teams come from the ground and they stay on the ground. You are building an infrastructure <coughs> to sustain democracy. That is how we build teams. Now why are these teams required? So that's number two, yeah? Is mobilizing the, and getting the teams together because we want to have conversations with people. We want to have conversations with people, not the ones who are convinced that they do not belong in spirit to a democratic spirit. But there are people who may not want to vote for hate and violence but have to then combine themselves and vote for one candidate. And that convincing people to vote for one candidate is very crucial. It's not, oh, please don't vote for BJP. You can vote for anybody else you like. Uh-uh. Not possible. You have to combine the vote so that the vote is not divided and therefore your opponent wins. So that is the mobilization bit and connecting with people so that we have a more expanded presence of we are creating a movement towards the goal we want. Now, beyond that is how and what do you tell people? What do you have a conversation about? That is the communication. There is a communications link between the ground and what is happening in social media. It is important that we very consciously build that. What are the issues in Andhra Pradesh will be different and how we frame it from Karnataka. But our goal is the same. We want to get rid of hate and violence and divisive politics. We want to replace it by issue-based politics. We want to demand what we need not the onslaught of something and keep on taking, being whipped and whipped and whipped and what silently zipping our mouths, just take it. So that communication side is very important to build and we can talk about it, how we did it. And the fourth and final one is the political negotiation and coordination, which is about bringing together 
a certain clarity so that we don't divide the vote. There is a role of smaller parties. A huge sacrifice that is done by smaller parties of clearing the way so that people see it clearly that, okay, there's a BJP candidate and there's a Congress candidate. I know I have to vote for the Congress. Or there is a BJP candidate, a JDS candidate. I have to vote. So that there is not a division of votes. There is more, there is a lot more experience in the room to tell you about what those stories were. But it's important to do those negotiations in order to say, please don't confuse the constituency so that people actually say, yeah, I can vote for anybody else and divide them. That's one part of the political negotiations and the other is why people are being put into this conversation with in the process, in the experiment of waking up is to try and coordinate how they meet their candidate. They, their candidate might be the worst person that they have voted for before and think, oh my god, I cannot vote for this person again. But in the big picture, this has been very, very tough for us to is to try and convince people it, in the big picture I'm sorry you may have to do that why? and that's the three hour conversation you have about the big picture of removing hate as your first battle and your second then you are clear to take on your second battle of accountability but in the first battle you cannot expect to protest or get any space to protest because you have to first clear the space of hate, violence and divisive politics. And that is the story of Karnataka in a, in a nutshell. I want to leave you with one thought. You are beginning to weave your own story. You are the threads, the first threads that are going to leave this. You will join up many more threads because you will need them. You will need collaboration with a single-minded goal, leaving out, forgetting all your differences. Because too much is at stake. And I'm telling you this from experience from Karnataka. It's a 112 organization and that's not enough. It's only the beginning. So this unity of purpose is where the story really begins for a fight for democracy. Thank you.